ladybug right there and a teeny tiny bee at work I think they're called sweat bees this is how mother nature does it but it's just sitting there on the flower gathering water it looks like the dew So it's basically getting a drink. I think the sun needs to warm everything up a little bit before they can get to work on getting pollen out because pollen is too sticky to come out without, um, you know, when it's damp and wet. So that makes it impossible to pollinate. Cleaning his legs off. Now he's cleaning his face. So maybe he's just cleaning up for the day before he goes and collects. There he <laughs> He's wiping all his pollen off. I guess he's sterilizing himself. <laughs> he's wiping his little stinger parts. There goes his face, aww. Once the um, potatoes of flowers have been pollinated, if you look at this stem right here, this is definitely not pollinated. Where you see these little bumps right here, let's see. Those are possible pollinations on this one right here. And right there is possible too. We'll know more in a couple weeks. And possibly right there. And then a berry will form like a tomato will form on a tomato plant. My friend Tree Leaves posted this video in the garden group I have on Facebook and agreed to let us see or share here. She's um, using a toothbrush to vibrate the pollen from the anthers. The anthers are the yellow part on the flower and then the stamen, this tiny little thing sticking out here is the stamen and you want to put the stamen into the pollen. The cell phone shows up like a mirror and you can really see the pollen really well in it. I thought that was a great ideal to use rather than a normal mirror. But I'll put a link to her channel if you'd like to go by and see her in the subject area. She was really good at getting many berries last year. When you're choosing a flower, this one right there that's not open is the one you want to open and get the pollen out of it and use it to um, take to another plant and crossbreed with that. But since I don't have another flower open right now, all I can do is take some of the pollen from the anthers and put them in a petri dish and save them till another plant opens. Or if this is self-pollinating, um, I can just take it and put it on the stamen here, this little tiny thing that's coming out. Pollen comes out of the yellow, the end of the yellow, and then goes on to the tip of that and creates the berry or the formation. This potato right here is a diploid and it, that means that it has um, two sets of parents just like we're diploids and it doesn't um, self-pollinate so you have to take the pollen from this plant and add it to another plant that's a diploid and you can either do the vibration method of collecting if it's warm out but here it's kind of a wet environment and harder to get the pollen out 
if you can wait till the plant is um this one the stamen's already out when you emasculate a flower what you're doing is taking the anthers here and removing them and it looks like the stamen is in there there it is By emasculating, what you're doing is like um, when you take a cat or dog and get them fixed, you're sterilizing the plant where um, it can't produce any more pollen. You're removing the male part and leaving just the female. And you can take something and close the flower up around it. Take a string and tie it together. Let's see, this is an older flower, so there's not much pollen left in it. You want this one right here? It's not open yet, and you want to go in and open it up, and take the anthers, the yellow part, out. You either want to shake them. Oops into the dish or onto a surface. See if I can get any pollen out. Pretend this is another plant. And we'll just take the pollen and touch it on to that one. And that one. That one. You can keep this in the refrigerator for a few days and hope for another bloom or you can freeze it. You know, not the flower, but the pollen. You know, once you get it dry. And you want to make sure you mark your container so you know what plants you took it from. Let me show you how I label and um, keep records of what I'm breeding. This is how I keep records. I took last year, this was the female plant, so I named it DS1. DS stands for the where it came from, and it's the first plant, the first mom. This is um, dad. It's a lighter purple flower, and this is a darker purple, beautiful brown stem, green stem. So this one is DS2, and between them, they made three berries. I only photographed two of them, and I got 50 seeds from those three berries, so I named them E1-2015. And when I plant them out, then I should have a new plant, a new variety, and see what these two create. This is a card that's created for a plant that was self-pollinated. It wasn't crossed. Um, the plant CCP1, it produced um, that tuber last year. And then I put a copy of that plant because plant one and plant two are the same plant. Seeds from it from 2015 and berries from it. And it should produce the same tuber because it wasn't crossed. But because plants are in the past crossed, get plants from its parents or tubers from its parents unless this has been pure all the way down that would make it an heirloom and it would always produce the same plant I should also point out that this is a diploid and this is a tetraploid most of our commercial potatoes are tetraploid and some of them are male sterile or most of them are male sterile 
so they can't produce berries. That's why it's not common to see a berry on most of our potato plants. Where right now the Yukon Gold has been self-pollinating a lot, so a lot of the Yukon Yukon Gold growers are getting berries.